previously on the Carbide Camp Knife series. Having machined our bevels, we went through the process of sanding our knives to near finished condition. After these blades are hardened, any material removal is going to be significantly more difficult. With our preliminary shaping and finishing done, it's time to cross the perilous bridge called heat treatment. We begin the day of heat treat in my windowless closet of an office with four blades ready to be shoved into a forge, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. They needed a logo, and maybe an identifier. So I loaded up my blanks back into the Nomad in Station 4 and created some toolpaths for engraving. I added the Carbide 3D logo and paired it with the iteration number of the knife design. I'm using our 501 PCB engraver, which is really a general purpose engraver that you can use on multiple materials. I've used it on aluminum before, and I figured that a brief dip into tool steel wouldn't be too terrible for it. I'm doing three passes as a trace operation, stepping down 2 to 3 thou each time. 10,000 RPM, 5 inches per minute, I'm taking this super conservatively. I set my zero a tiny bit high because I'd rather have the engraver cut too little than too much on the first pass. Wasting 50 seconds is far more palatable to me than wasting an engraver or gouging a blade. After the initial air cut though, everything worked out great. I was really happy with how good the engraving turned out. The logo and text looked super crisp, and there was enough depth that I knew I'd never have to worry about accidentally erasing them when doing additional sanding and finishing. But now, there was genuinely nothing else I could do to stall. It was time to fire up the forge and heat treat these blades. Alright, quick brain dump while you watch me work. The goal of heat treating is to develop an advantageous crystalline structure called martensite in the blade. You do this by heating the steel above a critical temperature where its grain structure is basically reset. For O1 tool steel, that target temperature is about 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. At such a high temperature though, atmospheric oxygen can strip carbon out of the steel, creating scale and weakening it. So you want to run a slightly oxygen-deprived fuel-air mixture through your burner. Even so, you're still going to develop some discoloration and surface contamination of your blades over time. This is not a process you want to get wrong and have to repeat. Since most infrared thermometers top out around 1300 degrees, the only way for me to gauge the temperature of my blade is by color. The emission spectra of steel is very well documented, and the color I'm looking for is described as cherry red. An extra complication here though is that I'm doing this outside, and the brightness of daylight makes it difficult to observe any incandescent glow. In fact, at first I could barely tell my forge was lit except by sound and, of course, heat. There was a lot of that. Because this basic forge that I was using had a vertical burner coming down from above, there was a hot spot I had to work around. I was most concerned about overheating the edge of the blade since it's thinner, so I kept the spine of the blade towards the center and shuffled the blades back and forth periodically as they heated up. I did two blades at a time this way. They say you can tell a blade is at temperature when it ceases to be magnetic, and it's kind of true. It indicates that you're in the ballpark, but I found that it took another minute or so for the entire blade to reach the correct shade of red that I was looking for. For my quenchant, I chose to use canola oil. Some people say to use motor oil, some people say to mix the two, but I've seen enough people having success with this that I figured I would stay with the less toxic stuff. Though flare-ups tend to be pretty short-lived in oil if they even happen at all, you want to make sure that you're using a metal container. This paint can is great because it has a lid which I can use for both fire suppression and storage. Once you remove the blade from the forge, you have mere seconds to get it into the oil and bring its temperature down to below about 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how you lock in the martensite structure that you're looking for in steel. If you move the blade around to help cool it, make sure that your movements are planar to the blade. Lateral movements will cool the blade at different rates on either side, increasing the risk of warpage. On a knife this small, the risk and consequences are really quite minimal, but plenty of aspiring swordsmiths have been figuratively burned at this phase. Once you can safely wipe off your blades, make sure they're actually hard. The term that describes this is skating a file, and it basically means that the teeth of the file don't bite into the workpiece. The file will still remove scale and will eventually abrade your workpiece, but it really won't dig into the steel. These are two test pieces that I did before the blades, and you can also hear the difference between the original state and the hardened state. After I confirmed that I hadn't screwed up my heat treatment, I immediately put the blades in an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for tempering. Fresh out of the quench, these knives are extremely hard but also brittle. Tempering slightly reduces the outright hardness of steel, but makes it much more impact resistant. I ended up doing two tempering cycles that were two hours each. Between the cycles, I cleaned the blades. I tried using a soak in vinegar to help loosen the scale, and it seemed to work 
but being that I'm no expert, there might be more effective ways of doing this. If you know of any, please drop them in the comments section down below. Cleaning the blades lets you observe the temper colors of the steel as an extra verification that you did it right. In my case, the desired color is straw. After tempering, I cleaned up my blades and did a little more sanding to finish them up. Because my CNC finish texture wasn't perfectly smooth, I had to use some Scotch-Brite and some applied pressure to really scrape off the scale in the micro valleys of the bevel. Initially, I was going to sand up to 800 grit, which gives you a smooth but not quite shiny look. But at 600 grit, I was already pretty satisfied, and I figured that going any higher would just accentuate the flaws in my knife, of which there were many. After finishing the flats of my blades, I realized that the vinegar soak had done an excellent job of darkening the steel where I'd engraved it, and it really made the logo and text stand out. That was definitely a happy little accident. And with that, I wrapped up the most terrifying phase of my knife-making ordeal. Despite my irrational fears that I'd somehow set myself on fire, or worse yet, ruin a blade during heat treat, I got through the process with a greater appreciation for the material science and metallurgy behind knife making. Concepts like phase diagrams that made no sense to me in college were suddenly given real and tangible meaning. So I'm really glad I just pushed through my initial reluctance and tried my hand at this process. In the next penultimate episode of the Carbide Camp Knife series, we'll machine some knife scales for our naked steel blades. Until then, good luck and have fun machining your own projects, folks.